Okay, it's Luxury Fred, and again, I am here in Costa Rica at the SAHIC, the South American Hotel Investment Conference, and I'm in one of the intense networking sessions. And again, the conference is for sustainable hotel development here in Costa Rica. So we have uh, hotel developers and investors and representatives of uh, different tourism organizations as well, all coming together to discuss sustainable tourism in Costa Rica. That is a great example that business and industry and local municipalities can move the needle, even if the federal government is reticent uh, to do so. Uh, that's particularly the case in the United States, but then also in places like Bonaire or others, where you saw groups and businesses coming in and saying, hey, we believe this, this is important, we're going to drive this kind of change, regardless of whether you agree with this or not, and you know what, eventually, you're gonna get on board. So I'm here with uh, Philippe Cousteau, who was one of the uh, keynote speakers here at the uh, SAHEC convention in Costa Rica. And the convention is all about sustainable development and sustainable hotel growth and things like that. So I wanted to ask you, I write a lot about luxury travel and maybe what a luxury traveler themselves could do as they travel to promote sustainability and to uh, be environmentally friendly, I would say. So the good news from a luxury perspective is that oftentimes uh, environmental sustainability and best practices start in the luxury sector because mm -hmm. uh, they can be, at least initially, a little bit more of an investment to develop and to, to create. And so the luxury traveler oftentimes has uh, more options mm -hmm. than, uh, than, than mid-level or lower, lower uh, level travelers. Um, in terms and so of choosing a hotel that is, that is in, in terms of having access to a hotel that is doing interesting projects in the environment. Right. So we were talking earlier, you mentioned the Four Seasons. So you right. mentioned a little bit earlier the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. For example, I know the Four Seasons in Bora Bora has a naturalist, a coral reef naturalist right. uh, that works there mm -hmm. uh, on the staff and that they bring uh, guests out and have experiences on the coral reef. Um, so, you know, higher end luxury hotels, there's a lot of them around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Montage, a lot of the Four Seasons that are doing some really interesting things mm -hmm. with the local communities and looking at green building practices and things like that. So, um, I uh, really encourage people just to think about where they're going, mm -hmm. you know. Not all luxury developments are created equal. Mm -hmm. Some of them have that perspective that we're going to create a, a wonderland um, that is completely artificial. Right, and we're like, a go theme in, park. like a theme park. Like essentially a theme park experience, and it's going to be luxurious, right. but it's going to be completely detrimental to the local system and the community and the environment. And then there are some where uh, they have really terrific uh, uh, initiatives, environmental initiatives on property, and all of that stuff is on people's websites. Right. So I really encourage uh, luxury and business travelers to drive your business. The most important thing you do shopping is politics, right? right. Uh, you have power with your wallet. Right. Drive your business towards those hotels, those resorts that are doing the right thing, particularly in the luxury sector. There's right. a lot of choice out there and, uh, and be picky. And you know what? You're gonna have a better, more authentic experience while you're there and know that, wow, I'm not only having a terrific vacation, but I'm also helping the environment and the local community right. as an added bonus right. for the money I'd be spending anyway. anyway. Right, right. Uh, why wouldn't you want to do that? Right, right, makes sense. Uh, your legendary name, does it carry a big burden in terms of pursuing this, or is this a natural evolution from what Jacques was doing, Well, a modern version of it, so to speak? Well, you know, I work in films. I have a couple different TV shows uh, on the Travel Channel, on a syndicated show in the States. I have a nonprofit. We do environmental education. We've done a lot of work over the years. Uh, I've got some children's books out, things like that. You know, our work in sustainability and in design and in the destination resort space is an extension of that work right. because it's another canvas right. which we can utilize to help educate and inspire people right. to be better stewards of the planet. Right. When people are on vacation, there is much more willingness to try new things, have new experiences, right. and, and be open to new ideas. Right. So. It, it, as advocates for the environment, as advocates for sustainability, shame on us if we're not in destinations, if we're not working in the tourism sector. Right. Tourism is the greatest voluntary transfer of wealth between rich and poor in the history of humanity. Wow. There's tremendous potential in the tourism industry right. for good and for bad. Right. 
and if we can help to encourage uh, and empower mm -hmm. and be a catalyst for good things in the tourism industry, mission accomplished. And uh, last question, uh, destination. It's on your radar right now. Interesting place. So interesting. my top of my bucket list. I will say this. I had a terrific experience. I was just in Egypt for a few days last week. Mm -hmm. And um, Egypt is a really amazing place. They've suffered terribly from the revolution and from mm -hmm. the, the terrorism that's been going on in the Middle East. First time um, there? It was my first time there. You know, at, at its peak, it was around 12 million visitors. Now right. it's five or six wow. million, if. Right. Um, so for those of you that are interested in going to Egypt, it's a really interesting time to go right now. The, right. The, 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 there are incredible tour guides that are need work, that you can help provide work and help support some of these people. Right. There, there, there's uh, incredible hotels. Uh, we stayed at the Ritz Carlton on the Nile. Right. And it was not expensive at all. So right, right. Great affordable opportunities. Right. Um, uh, the, 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 we got first at 8 a.m. We got to the Great Pyramids and we were some of the only people there. Right. So uh, I, I really had a great time in Egypt. Um, everyone was wonderful there. I would say too, on the top of my bucket list of somewhere I have not visited is Bhutan. That is absolutely my dream right now to wow. go to Bhutan. So um, yeah. Cool. I have a friend that's a travel writer who's also an attorney. She just went there and interviewed the Chief Justice really? of their Supreme Court. Wow. And had an amazing experience in addition to that experience. Yeah. yeah. Very, cool. Cool. very cool. Thank you very much for your sure. time. Thank you.